Hey guys, how's everything going? This is Jay. So in this video, let's continue our journey uh, for React's walk, uh, source code walkthrough. Um, it's about use deferred value today. Uh, I've already put my content uh, into my blog. It's just the dev. So if you want to read through the text, you can just uh, visit my blog. Um, uh, yeah, and if you want to listen my explain it, explain, explain it, uh, just uh, continue uh, watching my video. So uh, about use deferred value, uh, I'm not sure whether you have used it before or not. I haven't. I just recently knew it. Uh, so it's one of the API sh provided by uh, React Concurrent Mode, which is React 18. Um, I'm not sure whether it's finalized or not. It's kind of like uh, things that are not still uh, uh, still not stable, except the transition suspense, suspense, I guess. I don't hear much about use deferred value. But anyway, let's see how it works. It's it actually pretty simple. Um, on the uh, React homepage, it has a very detailed explanation about use deferred value. But one problem is that the demo there is broken. Uh, you, you cannot actually see what is trying to uh, to tell. So I'm gonna uh, demonstrate the uh, cases uh, usage of it in my uh, video and hopefully to get you understand. And uh, after that, we're gonna write the use deferred value by ourselves, and uh, you will see how it comes. Cool. So what's the problem? Problem is like this. Um, if we don't use the use deferred value, oh, mm, there is some, okay, sorry. Um, if we can see, open this demo link, um, and again, um, here, I think, oh yeah. If we click the next button, you will see that the title and the post here are uh, switched at the same time, right? If we open it, um, if we open the source code, the bucket, and you can see that here, it's pretty simple. Um, if the when we click the button, it will uh, fetch two APIs. They're all mock uh, with different timeout. Well, the first one is title for the fetch user. It will uh, be delayed like. 300 milliseconds for post, it will be um, one second. Yeah, so so when the button is clicked, the two APIs will be fetched, but uh, here, because in our button, we wrap our uh, new resource, like the, 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 the wrapped promise stuff in the start transition. And uh, so when the first API is done, we need to try to re-render uh, the post API is not ready yet. So you just throw the promise, uh, which will cause the whole app to be suspended. So that's why uh, we only see these two uh, will data will be um, rendered at the same time with the, uh, the transition. About transition, uh, I've already explained how the transition works. So just as I think there's a link somewhere yeah link here you just uh, visit and uh, take a look so this is a problem when, I, when we click it you can see that it will be uh, toggle at the same time uh, but since after 300 milliseconds later we could see the title why not we just see the title first and the post right so yeah we just uh, uh, we there's a second example uh, we just uh, wrap our component um, with wrap our data with this use deferred value, say like uh, here, where is it? Uh-huh. Uh. Yeah, yeah, this is not right. Name it uh, this one. Yeah, this is right. Um, You can see that in our new component, we just wrap our re resource with use deferred value and just use it for the post here. So now when we click next button, title is rendered and the, the post will be rendered later. <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, it's because we have this same resource, but we just, uh, uh, for profile page, we defer it, but for the title, we didn't refer it, right? Um, yeah, here for the title, title is here. We don't didn't refer it. Um, for post, we, we defer it. So defer it means that I act, defer is like, like uh, only, only 
only gets the data when the data is ready. So there should be no promise stuff. Um, that that's what deferred means, I think. And so why it works this way? Uh, I have a pre put a gif here. I click it. Yeah, title change, post change later. So our pr pr problem here is that we only have one uh, one resource, right? Like this one resource holding two promises. One will be resolved sooner than the other, and when that is when that is uh, resolved, React will try to re-render. But when we render the post, the second promise is not resolved yet, so it will tr trigger an error, uh, which is a promise, and the, then so it, everything will be suspended. What we want to do is defer it, like uh, don't use the new resource for the post component, right? So how could we do that? Well, I think actually we can do that because uh, we've already have a, a, a tool called useState and useEffect. I think we have already met this pattern like uh, when we have, uh, uh, when we want to, uh, a, a component to have this internal state, we get something from the props as initial data and hold the internal state and then allow that state to be changed, right? So this is so this is kind of something uh, similar. We would just use state, create the internal state to hold the value, just delaying the setting of this value through the use effect. So when the resource is set, we don't set it right away. We use the previous state and then set the state into use effect, right? But you will say, hmm, it's still is what yeah, at the, the first window you won't you won't cause any trouble, but after the use effect, you will cause trouble, right? Yeah, it will cause trouble. You will, will create uh, uh, through this error, but we could just use start transition uh, to to like uh, to encapsulate that error. So now, uh, what what you can see is that it means that okay, use when use this different value for for that specific render, nothing, no error. But for the future, we, we transition, delay the transition actually, delay the transition to the future, to the next tick uh, in the effect. So when the, speaking of our, our, our case here, when the title API is ready, uh, this will be called, right? And uh, yeah, the state of the previous state, which is already, uh, already resolved data for post, the old post will be directly used. So that's why you can see title could be rendered faster. And then it will, after this rendered, uh, React will try to uh, run set state here, but in this transition mode. Of course, it will trigger in the error uh, through an promise error. So it will trigger these things to be suspended. And, but it will, we have this use transition uh, to hold it, so it will not render the suspended fallback. So you can see that we can just do this over and over again, right? Just wrap things. Uh, you, you want to delay the transition, um, delay the the, the stop, uh, delay the the uh, suspend. Uh, just uh, use this function. I think I'm making this very clear, right? If just uh, you just look at this code and it's pretty straightforward. So that's it, and we can replace this with just deferred value and uh, open our demo. You will be the totally the same, just as the React use deferred value. So here's our new question is, how does exactly React use deferred value work? Uh, I've already grabbed the uh, source code here. You can just uh, search on the uh, React um, like GitHub and uh, you can see that for each hook, we have mount and update. For mount, we just mount state and uh, we have the effect and something like setting the transition stuff and the try, set a try set value stuff. I would say actually this is pretty much the same as our code. You might think that what the, what the heck is this transition doing? Well, don't worry. Let's first take a look at the source code of start transition. If you take a look at this transition, you can see it actually uh, keeping keeping uh, it memoed to the previous transition, then set it to one, and then set it back. Right? This is totally the same as what we're doing here. And uh, try scope. This is a callback. So in a callback, we set set the value. Which is the set state we're doing here? Yeah, actually, internal of uh, 
I've used deferred values, totally the same as what we wrote here, uh, rewrote here. But it's like uh, this is just the the internal implementation because for set state we have mount state and update as well. So yeah, so you now already know how use deferred value works. We we can actually just write our own. It's not that uh, magic, but you might think that. So still, I don't know what React current batch config transition is doing. For that, I've already covered it in my uh, eighth video of my series. So there's a link on my blog post. You can refer to it. And uh, to uh, I think the video is a bit messy. Um, I'll try to summarize all the important parts into the post uh, so, the, so that you can uh, refer it easier. Um, but the sim to be uh, to summarize. This is a flag to mark that the updates we are scheduling, uh, which lane it should be put. Um, if we go back to the, uh, where is it? Yeah, uh, I think there is something. There is something. Okay, I forgot where it is. Um, anyway, so in the transition, um, uh, so rem uh, I suggest you read my video. Um, it's uh, the the length of our updates will be mentioned in the video. So, uh, simply speaking, the transition is a is a flag to mark that like set state stuff or uh, something else. The the hooks changes should be placed in your transition length. Each length has different priority, and if if the if all the lengths occur in one render are all transition lengths and it's suspended then react decided to uh, not commit to the changes so that's why you will see that uh, it will not render any fallback even though the fallback is already uh, uh, rendered internally it's just not committed anyway wait for my post for the transition stuff yeah definitely uh, it will be easier to understand cool so that's all for this video. Pretty simple. Uh, I hope it helped. And uh, yeah, this is my seventeenth video. Um, I would say, I would say a good. I, I I've done a great job to myself. Um, yeah. See you next time. Bye bye.